first I'd like to say that I never expected to be asked to speak this evening. <laughs> um, I'm going to start off with a quote. In three different ways, women can fulfill the mission of motherliness in marriage, in the practice of a profession that values human development, and under the veil as the spouse of Christ. And that's by St. Teresa Benedict of the Cross, Edith Stein. So I'm going to just, you know, go over some points of um, my job. I work for a do-all company. It's an industrial bandsaw. Um, they make bandsaw machines, industrial supplies, tools. And I've been there about 16 years. I started out in the receiving department. I was interviewed by the director of logistics and got the job right away after I was laid off uh, from a Catholic retreat house in Glenview. Um, so he started me out as supervisor of receiving. And um, I, I always said, you know, I, I got those skills from raising three children for 20 years, the organizational skills. Um, and he, my boss was behind me. He, he always supported me. He always said, you can do it, you can do it. So that gave me courage and confidence because I came from being a housewife for 20 years. Um, and um, so uh, the best part of that receiving job was the actual seminars that I was allowed to go to to learn about how to be a supervisor. And in those seminars I learned mostly about personality types, which gave me the, le the leverage of understanding how people's work habits were and that their personality types. It, it gave me a lot of um, insight to be more interpersonal with them. They, they soon asked me, they, they, they soon started to have uh, the standards of the ISO 9000 company come into this company and they asked me to be an ISO 9000 auditor which which I was impressed with because that lifted the standards for the you know measured production and that was very good so I was trained I did the training and did the, went to different departments in the company and brought the accountability up uh, and the procedures were checked and and that was a good thing um, but soon after about five years in their receiving department and the UPS and FedEx and truck shipments, the 70 pounds of lifting, um, I was beginning to have back problems and chiropractor and so I could uh, no longer do that. So my boss saw the need in the accounting department so I went up into the accounting department and went into accounts payables. And I knew the system because I knew the company. I had been in the receiving end of it for five years, and I knew the company, so I knew the system. But I, I had no knowledge of accounting. Um, I did take some computer, I took a computer class at Oakton uh, Community College, and uh, that actually helped me in the receiving end because they brought in this huge uh, machine to pull, put the tool bits in. And, I had to run that, so I, and the other thing that I did is I took um, pers my own personality tests at Oakton to see what my skills were. So I had the confidence to then go on and do the accounting because that happened to be one of the things I scored high in, even though I had no training in accounting. Um, and the other thing that, that, that uh, it showed me that I did well in was uh, teaching. So I went into teaching catechism for 16 years. I taught CCD to fifth graders and then first graders. So um, the, I, I highly recommend the, those tests that you can take at Oakton, and they were free. Um, <clears throat> so now, I'm, for the last 10 years, I've been in 
accounts payables, and accounts receivables. I start the day by running five credit card reports, and they have to balance with the bank. Um, there was a uh, there was a problem with one of the reports. It didn't match up with the other one. And it causes a lot of confusion with my immediate coworkers. Um, now, I start my day out by praying the rosary. And then I, I come into work. And then at noon, I go to the chapel. It, it, it happens to be St. Joseph the Worker Chapel in, in Wheeling. Um, <laughs> I, and that's, that's, that is not a mistake, okay, because it took me a few months to find that chapel. But um, I found it, and I, and I go there almost daily at noon, unless I'm trying to save money on gas. Um, and there I, I pray the chaplet of Divine Mercy, and then I pray for my children, and then I pray a meditation, and then I read the scriptures. And then I'm back to work. And a lot of times, I'll get a scripture that has to deal with my work for that day. And it really helps me. It really gives me, um, it, it gives me someone to talk to. <laughs> I like talking to God. <laughs> so, um, and, and between, between that and, and having had some good uh, seminars on how to deal with people, I mean, I can pretty much handle just about any situation, you know, that comes across my path. And Francis told his friars, Blessed is the servant who would accept correction, accusation, and blame from another as patiently as he would from himself. Blessed is the servant who, when he is rebuked, quietly agrees, respectfully submits, humbly admits his fault, and willingly makes amends. And that's a program for, for survival. That's a program of taking my own fearless moral inventory. And when I have been out of sorts with my, emotionally with my coworkers, I remember to ask God to reconcile me with them and all the significant people in my life. Um, I attend Mass about three times a week in the evening, 5.30 at Immaculate Conception with my friend. And, um, and we pray the St. Michael prayer every single day after Mass. Um, I, I receive the Sacrament of Reconciliation every two weeks here at Paul of the Cross with the Opus Dei priests from 3 to 5 on Thursdays. And... <clears throat> I'd like to read this. It's, it's a daily affirmation. I have it pinned in my cubicle. Like a daily affirmation, I have to keep reminding myself of these. The paradoxical commandments, people are illogical, unreasonable, and self-centered. Love them anyway. If you do good, people will accuse you of selfish ulterior motives. Do good anyway. If you are successful, you will win false friends and true enemies. Succeed anyway. The good you do today will be forgotten tomorrow. Do good anyway. Honesty and frankness makes you vulnerable. Be honest and frank anyway. The biggest men and women with the biggest ideas can be shot down by the smallest men and women with the smallest minds. Think big anyway. People favor underdogs, but follow only top dogs. Fight for a few underdogs anyway. When you spend years building, be destroyed. It, it, building may be destroyed overnight. Build anyway. People really need help, but may attack you if you do help them. Help people anyway. Give the world the best you have, and you'll get kicked in the teeth. Give the world the best you have anyway. I have several of these, if anybody would like one. Um, and there is one other get, uh, reading I'd like to read, and it's called A Gift for God. He doesn't need a present all wrapped and tied with a bow, 
nor words of adoration without good deeds to show. But there's one thing he'd like from you that no one else can give, a gift to surely honor him as long as you shall live. That gift is you. You're quite unique, a presence on this earth. And how you choose to live your life determines that gift's worth. Be of service to the Lord. Make your goodness known. You're bound to make a difference, for we reap what we have sown. Be a candle where you live and help to light the way. Make your corner of the world shine brighter every day. And I'd like to end with a song by Susan Boyle. You may have a difficulty with somebody. Um, what's your, what do you do? Well, I, um, I pray for them, first of all. <coughs> and then I pray for reconciliation, that God would reconcile us. Um, and I wait. And I wait, and it usually resolves itself. And, I, and God always shows me some way to deal with it. Do you always try to resolve any issues that you have with someone? Well, um, I did, did um, bring up something to my boss, and, uh, and, and it, was, it was handled very well. And um, I have, when I was given more responsibilities, I did ask for a raise, and I did get that raise. So I do um, know that I have to take care of myself in that in the mm -hmm. corporate world. And there, I mean, what I liked about my company is they're the doing the work of Saint Joseph it, and Jesus, the carpenters. They're building. That's the they're building for communities and family life, and it's it's an honest job. It's just an honest job, and it. We come to work every day and we do our work. I think that the sacrament of um, confession and reconciliation gives me the graces. That's why I go every other week. Anybody else have questions? When you pray for the people that are um, giving you a hard time, what do you pray for for them? I pray that God would give them everything that they need mentally, physically, and spiritually. And I, I um, have a little bit of counseling education in my background, so um, I did ha take some courses in, at Monte College, and um, uh, it, I, I know how to sort of delve into a personality type. And when I see that that personality type is really struggling more than I am, I can only have empathy for them. <laughs> but I, like I say, I have to work a program. I have to work on myself. Uh, you know, it doesn't come natural. I'm just like anybody else. I mean, I get mad behind the wheel of a car, and just like everybody else. I have to <laughs> constantly work on myself.